Hello World. Here are four weird built-in data structures in Python that are useless, especially among Python beginners. And today, we'll explore how and when to use them. Number one, frozen sets. So firstly, I'm going to define a set and a frozen set. So S is equal to set and it has one, two, three. And FS is equal to frozen set one, two, three. So here, a frozen set is exactly the same as a set, except that we cannot add or remove anything from the frozen set after we create it. So for example, let's say I want to add something to S and let's print S and I want to add something to FS and let's print FS. So if I run this, an error will happen for our frozen set because we cannot add anything to a frozen set after we have already created it. So I have to remove this and only then this will print. Similarly, I can remove something from a set but I cannot remove anything from a frozen set. So if I try to remove anything from a frozen set, I'll simply get an error. So once again, I have to remove this remove statement in order for the code to work. So once again, once I create this frozen set, this frozen set will only contain one, two, and three, and I cannot add anything here, and I also cannot remove anything here. However, why do we use frozen sets over sets in that case? So one thing about frozen sets is that frozen sets are immutable, while sets are mutable. Meaning that I can actually use a frozen set as a dictionary key, and I can also add a frozen set to another set. So for instance, let's just create a dictionary D. So I'm going to create a frozen set here, one, two, three, and let's say it points to Apple, and let's create another frozen set, and this time we have one, two, three, four. And let's say it points to orange. So if I print D, I will get this. So notice that in this dictionary, our keys are actually frozen set. So this is only possible because a frozen set is immutable. However, if we will try to use this with a set, we will simply get an error. So if I were to run this again, I will simply get an error because a set cannot be used as a dictionary key. Similarly, we can add a frozen set to another set. However, we cannot add a set to another set because of this immutability issue. So let's create another set, S is equal to set, and let's add a bunch of frozen sets inside. So let's print S, and this is what we will get. So we have a set that contains two frozen sets. However, if we try to add a set inside another set, we will get an error. So essentially, the main reasons why we would use frozen sets is because of its immutability, and hence the ability to use frozen sets as dictionary keys or as set elements. Number two, default digs. So I'm going to start with a normal dictionary is equals to apple is four, orange points to five, and pear points to six. So I'm going to index apple and we will simply get 4. However, if I try to index a key that does not exist, let's say apple pie, I will get an error. So here we get a key error because the key apple pie does not exist in this dictionary D here. However, using default digs, we can get rid of this issue. So I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to create a default dig. So in this case, we have to import default dig from collections. So from collections, import default dig. And I'm going to create a dictionary, default dig. And here, we need to have two arguments. So the first argument is our default value. So I'm going to just write lambda 100 first. I'll explain this later. And next, we have our actual dictionary. So similarly, apple points to 4, orange points to 5, and pear points to 6. So if I print D, we will get this. So now, let's try to index some of the values. So I'm going to print D, apple, and D, orange. So here, we will simply get 
4 and 5. Because 4 is the value of the key apple, and 5 is the value of the key orange. However, let's say I want to index a key that does not exist now, so apple pie. So in this case, we will get 100 instead. So instead of raising a key error like a normal dictionary would, a default dig will simply return a default value that we give here. So here, we add this lambda 100 rather than 100 itself because whatever we pass in here has to be a function. So this is actually the same as writing a function. So let's say return 100 and it takes in nothing and it returns 100. Take this away and return 100. So this is the exact same as writing my lambda function beforehand. And I will still get 100 if I run the code. So some of you might ask me, why do we not just use the dictionary.get method in that case? So I'm going to comment this out first. So instead of indexing, I use get. And here I pass in a default value. So here, 100 will be written if apple pie does not exist. So if I run this again, we will still get the same output. However, using a default dig is actually faster than using the .get method. So if you have millions and millions of indexing operations, it might be more worthwhile to use a default dig rather than the get method. Number three, dex. So a dex is also known as a double-ended queue, and it allows us to add or remove elements at both the start and the end of the queue in O1 time. So I'm just going to create a deck first from collections import deck and q is equals to deck one two three four five and if I print q I'll simply get this. So here I'm going to add something to the end of deck. So q append six and if I print q again we will have one two three four five six. Similarly, I can also add something to the left of the queue using append left. So I'm going to append left 0 and I'm going to print Q. And now I will get 0 to 6. So note that both append and append left will take O1 time, which is constant time and it is very fast. So now let's talk about popping and removing items from our queue. So let's say x is equals to q.pop. So this will remove something from the right side of the queue. So if I print Q and X, we will get 0 to 5 and 6 is X. So here, notice that 6 has been removed from our queue and is now assigned to X. Similarly, we can also pop from the left side of the queue in O1 time. So we just need to use the pop left method. So now 0 is going to disappear. And now it is going to be assigned to x. However, you might ask, why would we use a deck over a list? So in a deck, both adding and removing stuff from a deck from both ends will take O1 time, which is very fast. However, if we use a list, adding and removing stuff to the start of the list will actually take O n time. So if we have a large data set that contains many things inside our queue, it is better to use a deck because it is more time efficient. Number four, a named tuple. So a named tuple is essentially a tuple that allows us to access elements using a name as well as an index. So we usually use this to improve our code readability. So let's just define a named tuple first from collections import name tuple. So I'm going to create a dog name tuple is equals to name tuple. So here we pass in the name, which is just dog. And then we pass in the attributes. So name, age, and breed. So let's create a dog now. So Rocky is equals to dog. Rocky, age is four. And breed is German shepherd. So let's bring Rocky now. And we will get this dog name is Rocky age is 4, and breed is German Shepherd. So next, let's try to access some of the attributes. So let's do this. Rocky.name, Rocky.age, and Rocky.breed. And if I run this, I will simply get the name, age, and breed of Rocky. 
So here we are accessing the attributes through the name of the attributes. However, we can also choose to access the attributes through a index. So Rocky 0, Rocky 1, Rocky 2. So if I print this, I'm going to get the same output as the above line. So I can either use name or 0 to access my name. I can either use age or 1 to access my age. And I can either use breed or 2 to access my breed. So here, I usually use a name tuple if I have many things in my tuple. For example, let's say that our dog name tuple has many more attributes. Color, gender, hair length, owner, and let's remove all this. So I'm going to add a color, brown, male, short, and tom. So let's say I want to quickly access Rocky's color and owner. So if I were to use a normal tuple, I might need to do something like this. Rocky, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So owner is 6 and Rocky, 3. However, if I'm using a name tuple, I can actually do this. So Rocky.owner and Rocky.color without having to actually find out and count the index. So if I run this, we will get the same result. So thanks for watching and I hope you have learned at least one new thing about Python today.